I got my job at Twitch by going through the interviews. No surprise. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, obviously you have to be a god at lead code. I was pretty good. I got pretty good at lead code, but I forgot it all now. But that's not the part that actually got me the job. I actually was successful because I knew the entire technical big tech interview process from start to finish. So in this video, I'm going to explain and teach you the entire process of the technical interview without any fluff or filler. It's a process that's actually very unique and specific to big tech fan companies. And I discovered that not a lot of people are talking about it here on YouTube. There's more to it than just lead code. I'm going to show you what to expect, how to prepare so you can ace it when you get yours. Because right now there is no worse feeling than being rejected for a job you know you can do. Especially now where even getting an interview seems impossible. The typical interview process can be broken down into six parts as shown here. You got your first part which is the recruiter phase. Then you got the technical screener and then you got a category grouped as the on-site which consists of another round of technical interviews behavioral and my personal favorite the system design and lastly that sixth slot that goes to the offer the one that we grind the one that we want now you may notice after the recruiter and technical screener there's a little gate arrow and so what this means is you actually have to pass this interview. You have to pass the recruiter phase to get to the technical screener and you have to pass the technical screener to get to the onsite. The onsite is a bit more room because it's not a pass or a fail. It's more of a collective evaluation across all of them, which we'll get into right now. So let's start with that first phase, the recruiter screener. Now this typically comes after an email, after you get a referral or you apply to the job that you want from a recruiter says, Hey, do you have time for a 30 minute call where we can just find out more about each other, where your goals are, and if you're a good fit for the company. They'll ask you about your background, your previous experience, and <laughs> why you want to work here. And please don't say, don't say it for the money and that you're hiring. Don't do that. Now, this is a complete behavioral interview. The goal here is to get the recruiter to like you. So you want to tell them all about the company, why you fit there, why you're a good fit, research their leadership principles, research the product and who they are, and really sell yourself as someone who could be an asset to their team. One important tidbit is make sure you also talk about salary expectations in this recruiter phase because it's the first one. Nothing is worse than going through the entire interview process and then getting hit with a low ball offer that was completely out of your expectation. So get that, get, get your bag, you know, talk about it. So if the recruiter likes you and you pass, you will get through what's called the technical screener. Now this is specific for software engineers. And this is kind of what this book right here talks about and prepares you for. This is where your technical skills come to play. You've obviously talked to talk with the recruiter, but now can you walk the walk as a programmer? This is typically done, you know, you can be paired with someone or they can give you a take home or you click on a link and you have a certain amount of time to solve a problem. Maybe an easy or even an easier medium, but the goal here is to really showcase, can you even code? So there shouldn't be anything too complex or too complicated for you. Ah, the on-site. This is like the checkpoint of any video game. This is where you've gone through a few bosses, killed a few mobs, you're low on inventory, your health is low, your armor needs to be repaired, but you hit that save point where you can regroup and collect yourself before moving forward. You're so close, but, but you're still far. You, you still have quite a few ways to go. I, I would even argue the battle just starts right now. It's no longer about just passing and failing. You see, the onsite is a collection of interviews by an interview panel. So you'll go through different interviews with different people and they'll all rank you. They'll give you a score on their rubric. At the end of your interview loop, they'll come together and they'll pull their scores and evaluate you collectively. In the onset, you'll have a mix between behavioral, technical, system design. You might have multiple of a few and the order doesn't really matter. One key thing I want to say here is don't put all your eggs into one basket. Don't think if you absolutely kill the system design interview that you can completely just fool around and not take the system design or the t other technical interview seriously. That is detrimental. Try to be even across all of them and showcase your fundamental skills across the board instead of just being a one trick pony. But we're going to talk about the behavioral one right now. You see, when I was talking about this live with my chat over at twitch.tv slash Melky, I actually said that the majority of programmers fail at this behavioral interview. Yes, all those hours, all those lead code masters that you know, they do really well on the technical and lead code, 
But when it comes to behavioral, it seems like they don't even know what they're doing and they fumble the bag. And really, the interview drops off right there and then. Companies and teams want to ensure that you're a good fit for their squad. They don't want to hire just somebody who's going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. It's important to expect questions on your past experiences, your background, how you handled hardship, and how you dealt with problems. One of the most key and iconic questions is, what's your biggest weakness? Now, there's a right way and a wrong way to answer this. Hold on. The wrong way, I work too hard. Okay, buddy. Yeah, okay. So that's you're really selling me on that and the right way sometimes when i'm given a large problem i get overwhelmed with just how much i have to do to make sure i hit the deadline but what i do is i take a step back and I actually break down the bigger project into smaller tangible deliverables which i have a better chance of tracking and really pinpointing what i need to do key and subtle difference try to avoid awkward pauses yes it's fine to say you know what that's a great question give me a little time to think about it but don't take too long Interviewers love to see how you think on your feet and how you handle pressure. So make sure if you got an onsite and this behavioral with your manager, whoever, practice behavioral questions. It's not all about lead code. Now, the next one is the technical onsite interview. And this is gonna be pretty similar to your technical screener, but this time you're guaranteed to be pairing with another engineer. Someone who's either going to be on your team or someone who's part of a sister team. So you're going to go through the flow. You're going to be given a leak code question. This one's going to be much harder than a technical screener. So I wouldn't bank on it being an easy, but you know, a medium or a harder one. That's well in the realm of expectations. One thing to note here is sometimes they may throw what's called a bar razor. Now what a bar razor is, it's where they ask a much harder question and they don't really expect you to completely optimize and solve it flawlessly but they wanna test how good are you really? What is your technical limits? Now, if you are able to completely nail the bar raiser, this will benefit you because when you get your offer, it will be much, much juicier. So keep in mind that practicing the lead code and going that extra mile, it's worth it at the end. If you can balance it with all the other things. And now we get to the system design. This is my favorite part because I just absolutely love system design. I can do it all day. In this stage, you'll be presented with a question and asked to design a high level architecture to solve it. You have to consider factors like scalability, reliability, and performance when you construct it. But this one really is fun. This is kind of a whiteboard one where you can talk about different technologies that you would use to solve this particular issue. One thing to always consider is trade-offs. Always talk about the trade-offs of a system because this just shows your breadth of experience. Now to prepare for a system design interview is pretty straightforward, but there's two main ways of doing it. The first one is knowing your stuff. This is the best experience because if you've worked with systems, you've designed them in the past, when you're asked to redesign them, it's going to be like the back of your hand. You should know this one fairly easily. But for new systems or for your first system design interview, there's resources on YouTube and text that you can go to to study up and brush up on these patterns. Two of my favorite sources are actually textbooks. One is designing data intensive applications. And the other one is the system design interview by Alex Shu. So make sure you get those textbooks. They're fucking awesome. All right. And we get to it. We get to the offer, the holy grail. All those hours of lead code, all those hours of practicing behavioral questions, such as what's the animal you look forward to or learning about different Kafka real-time systems has paid off because you got that offer. It really is such a unique feeling. After a week of doing your interviews, you get that email, that congratulations subject title that says, hey, we want to welcome you to our team and enclosed is your PDF offer letter that you're just jonesing to open. So congratulations, you did it. Now there's a few things you can do, such as negotiating your salary and how that breaks down or negotiating your start date, which if you want to see that, make sure you let me know by commenting, liking, subscribing to my channel. I'll make that video next time for you guys. So remember, study the fundamental concepts, brush up your DSNA because lead code is not going anywhere. It's a necessary evil. Practice coding. You're going to be coding for the job, so nothing is better than actually coding. Whether it's doing projects or whether it's doing lead code, you cannot go wrong by continuously programming. And what we always like to say, time in the saddle tits by the way and the best piece of advice I can give you is have fun and do mock interviews join discord communities like mine link in the description below and ask people to mock interview you you will be surprised on if you take this interview seriously how much it prepares you for the real thing i hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you comment like and subscribe and until next time you know what you gotta do you gotta pow it